protected liquidity to keep the banks from collapsing these emergency loans like the BTFP, which we've talked about. And ironically, the BTFP expires November 6th, the day after the election. And I think when that happens, adding more fuel to a fire, we can expect to see a tightening of liquidity, of course, for the banks that have been depending on it. And particularly, this really affects the small banks, the regional banks. The regional banks are the ones that hold 70% of the commercial real estate loans. They're the ones that hold 70% of the small business loans. They're the ones that are getting clobbered. And so either the question then becomes if the BTFP ends, uh, is the Fed going to step in again when we see a strain in the uh, in the banking system. And I've in today's news recap, here's why silver's bull run hasn't even started. Silver has been on a historic bull run for the last two years. At press time, the precious metal is trading in close proximity to a 12 year high. The gray metal has notably outperformed gold in that time frame. Buoyed by both high demand and its increasing popularity as a store of value. Gold is actually outperforming silver relative to recent highs, while gold is currently trading at roughly 44% above its 2011 peak. Silver is actually priced approximately 29% below its very own 2011 peak price. As noted by Otavio Costa, a Chris Cat capital strategist, in an ex post on October 21st, the surge in prices that the yellow hued metal has seen can be explained primarily by two factors. One, its role as a hedge against inflation and a store of wealth. And two, renewed investor interest on account of the outsized returns that it has provided in the last two years. Costa opined that gold's recent move to the upside is caused by the fact that the markets are already pricing in further interest rate cuts from the Federal Reserve, signaling the potential for another significant wave of inflation. Uh, silver, however, hasn't seen a corresponding rise yet, and although Costa believes it is due in short order. Metals and commodities set to mirror gold's performance. If this line of reasoning pans out, Silver is set to see a renewed surge. To mirror gold's performance relative to 2011 highs, the gray metal would have to reach prices some 44% above the $46.47 per ounce seen in 2011. In other words, roughly $66.91 per ounce. Compared to prices at press time, which are $33.42 per ounce, this would represent represent a 100.2% upside. If its current pace were to be sustained, silver could reach that mark in mid-2025, potentially even earlier, depending on macro developments. The Crescat Capital Analyst also urged investors to keep a close eye on other metals as well as commodities. Notably, major banks are bullish on copper and nickel, while palladium is set to reach the highest close of 2024. Now we'll show you more clips of the latest interview, but first smash the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you do not miss out our daily recaps. Enjoy the episode quadrillion and 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 this is when you get into systemic risk counterparty risk reinsurance risk this is why they had to bail out aig back then because they they are the ones that would sell all the credit default swaps and, and the cascading of failures would would very quickly blow up the entire system and you know um it's very dangerous the, these these derivatives where the value is based upon a counterparty's ability to perform and in this environment, who knows what these counterparties' ability to perform truly is. So, yeah, I see tremendous risk as well. And, and you can see that by uh, the, how high the credit default swap uh, premiums are going up. Market sees it, too. This is something that um, ultimately is inevitable to some degree. I mean, to some degree, you have to have a cleansing of, of the system and the continuing of papering over these problems that, you know, in 2008, when all of this happened, the Fed's balance sheet was 800 billion. It reached 9 trillion a year ago. And that was all by purchasing interest rate sensitive uh, investments like treasuries and mortgage backed securities, both new ones and toxic ones to drive down interest rates to, to, to um, you know, smooth over these problems that really didn't go away. They just were hidden under the surface and and growing and lamenting and 
probably will only be worse when they finally exert themselves. But there is a a a structural problem within the banking system, and higher interest rates uh, on the back end of the bond market will expose much of this very quickly um, as these banks start to run into defaults and defaults from the loans, these bad loans that they have out there, uh, which, you know, with with their walking dead companies, um, mm -hmm. it's a real deal. And I think what happened with with um, the bank in Lindsay, Oklahoma last week must mm -hmm. be realized. And the interesting thing about all of it is that there's no word of it. I did an interview with Jay Martin yesterday, and he had no idea about it. And, you know, Jay's a smart dude. Uh, Jay is, is well-connected, mm -hmm. tuned in, works his butt off, studies hard like you and I do, Dunnigan, and he didn't know about it. Now, he's in Canada. The point of it is, is that if a guy that's tuned in and plugged in and reading and researching and preparing for people he's interviewing, you would think that he would know. No, mm -hmm. there is a, a specific um, plan or 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 whatever you want to call it to not let this information out but just enough to say we told you so i would think that this is just the very beginning you could say it's a slow fuse that was lit in lindsay oklahoma that we will see much more of as as days and weeks go by and it's very ominous and eerie that it 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 this btfp ends on the six you want to talk about rug pull they could pull the rug right out from underneath it you know, and and you look at the the betting odds. The betting odds show that Trump is a, about a, a two to one um, favorite, and I think the betting odds are better than the polls. Vegas knows more than the polls do, and you know, you want to talk about letting all of this blow up on his watch. You want to get conspiratorial? Sure, I, I could see all of that stuff happening. I think it's going to only get crazier after the election, and the banks are a perfect tipping point to to ignite that fuse. In today's news recap, Bitcoin and gold both win if Trump secures election, says J.P. Morgan. Analysts at the top bank think traders are feeling uncertain about the market, and this could further benefit Bitcoin. Gold is rising, and so is Bitcoin. And both are poised to continue seeing gains in the weeks to come thanks to geopolitical uncertainty, worries over the strength of the dollar, and the upcoming U.S. election, according to J.P. Morgan analysts. In a Thursday report, analysts at the bank said that a debasement trade is coming, which could further drive demand for both gold and Bitcoin and help push up prices. A Donald Trump victory next week in the U.S. presidential election increases the likelihood of such a trade. J.P. Morgan analysts said a debasement trade is when traders try to hedge against weakening currencies, geopolitical headwinds and government deficits. Gold is typically a good insurance policy against weakened fiat money. Top asset manager BlackRock has also touted Bitcoin's so-called digital gold as another asset to invest in during times of uncertainty. Rising geopolitical tensions and the coming U.S. election are likely to reinforce what some investors call the debasement trade, thus favoring both gold and Bitcoin. The report read, Republican nominee Donald Trump not only has come out as the crypto-friendly candidate in the race, but his policy to increase tariffs could lead to more inflation and geopolitical tensions, the report noted. The real estate mogul said he wants all future Bitcoin to be mined in the U.S. and also launched a decentralized finance DeFi project running on Ethereum that plans to release its own stablecoin, Decrypt previously reported. Gold has this year hit new highs and Bitcoin is now just 5% off, touching its March all-time high. The biggest digital coin is trading for $70,114. CoinGecko data shows after nearly setting a new all-time high on Tuesday. Now we'll show you more clips, but first smash the subscribe button and hit the like button as more people need to know this. Let's get back into the episode. This by Powell, there would be consolidations. This is what they want. They don't want 5,000 banks. They want a, a much smaller network of banks as we transition into central bank digital currencies, making it much easier to, to roll out modern monetary theory if we really go down that, that path. But um, yeah, uh, this is this is just beginning done again. There's no question uh, to me, that this is just beginning because the commercial real estate problem is not going away. People are not going back to these office buildings. And it's not just the office buildings. It's all of the the establishments that have sprung up around it. And as people leave, 
they're, 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 these office buildings and there's there's this vacuum of there's no one there so no one is at the restaurants and the bars and the shops and the, the salons and so they start to leave and then the people who are living in that area say you know the, it's, the quality of life is going down and the lack of tax revenue starts to increase because they're not getting the tax revenue they once did so then services start to decline the garbage collection fire uh police and and well if the quality of life is getting this bad then i'm out too and it's a vicious cycle that will end up very dangerously affecting the regional bank balance sheet, which I'm surprised we haven't seen more of collapse, but it's these programs that have come in and allowed a lifeline, if you will, that, that seemed to be coming to an end. So I guess we'll see real, real quick what that looks like. But, you know, for people who, who think along those lines of conspiracy and reality and the fine line between it, uh, maybe they've come, let's just pretend that they've come to the to the to the um, belief that that he will win, uh, uh, maybe this is their plan to, you know, blow up the system under his watch. And with the way the media is, they'll blame him for it. And regardless of the setup that he inherited, but I I think that way. I, and unfortunately, that's the environment we live in. But it's that razor's edge of a of a of a situation where if the Fed doesn't come in, like they have. Before, you know, everyone says, well, if you just would have left your money in the stock market after 08, you know, and you would have been made whole. Yeah, well, the Fed added nine trillion dollars into the, the kitty to to support, you know, the bond market, to depress interest rates, to support the stock market, the real estate market. It's all artificial. It was all propped up by a Fed who came to the rescue. What would the world look like had they not done that? And I think that's what you need to ask yourself. And the question is, will they come to the rescue again this time? And if they do, what does the rest of the world think about holding our treasuries of any duration and, and our currency that is being inflated away? That's the question that has to be asked. So, you know, you get to a point where you're so far in debt and you need the, you, you, you need, like, let me phrase it this way. We had the second biggest trade deficit in history uh, last month, like uh, $108 billion or something. Well, if that doesn't tell you how important it is for this country to be the world reserve currency um, and how reliant we are on the rest of the world for imports, because we are reliant upon these people taking our dollar for their goods. And we are very reliant upon buying their goods because we've offshored so much of our production and manufacturing and, and it's not sustainable. You end up compromising the world's desire to hold your currency and to hold your treasuries, that's when things start to really snowball. Now, we're not there yet, uh, obviously, but these are the kind of actions that lead to an acceleration, lead to that, that moment where the world says, yeah, I'm, I just don't, I don't want any more dollars or I don't want your treasuries. And this is the rise of the BRICS and trading in local currencies and, and why gold is doing what it's doing. So it's all one big, dirty mess, but it's all connected together. What do you think of today's show? Do you agree with Schechtman's take on the mounting pressures uh, within the banking system and the importance of securing wealth in these uncertain times? Andy highlighted the vulnerabilities in traditional banking from rising interest rates to shifting global alliances and why precious metals like gold and silver are increasingly seen as safe havens. Let us know your thoughts in the comments and be sure to join us next time as we continue exploring these critical financial trends and strategies to stay prepared. Thanks for watching.